dear students and my teacher friends namaskar i welcome you to the presentation lecture on surface anatomy of the lungs now today in this lecture we are going to discuss about the lobes fissures and lobules of the lungs and this is the title of today's lecture surface anatomy of the lungs now starting with the first point now in each lung we know there are two lungs one is the right one and second is the left one so in each lung there are one or two fissures are present and this fissures they are dividing the lung into lobes for example over here in this figure this one is the left lung and this one is the right lung and we are viewing them in the lateral view so in the figure you can see uh, this one is the fissure and over here this one is the fissure and this one is the fissure so what this fissures are doing so they are dividing <coughs> they are dividing the lungs into the lobes so this is the first point <coughs> of our discussion that the fissures they divide lung into the lobes now the second point now both the lungs have an oblique fissure i am showing you in the figure for example this is the this fissure oblique fissure of left lung and this one oblique fissure of right lung so both the lungs are having the oblique fissures and this fissures oblique fissures they extend inferiorly and anteriorly the right lung also having the horizontal fissure so first i am showing you see for example oblique fissure okay so this is the anterior this is the anterior part of the oblique fissure or the superior part of the oblique fissure and this part this is the this we can say the inferior part of the oblique fissure and right lung is also having this one this fissure so right lung is also having the horizontal fissure so in the second point we have discussed about the oblique fissure okay and where they are extending so anteriorly and inferiorly and right lung is also having besides the oblique fissure horizontal fissure is also present in the right lung so you can see that in the left lung there is only oblique fissure is present then in the right lung oblique fissure is there and horizontal fissure is also present now third point now the oblique fissure in the left lung separates two lobes so the oblique fissure this one what this fissure is doing so it is dividing the entire left lung into two lobes so this larger upper lobe is known as the superior lobe and this inferior smaller lobe is known as the inferior lobe so left lung is divided into two lobes superior superior lobe and inferior lobe by the oblique fissure so this is the third point of our discussion now the fourth point now in the right lung superior part of the oblique fissure separates superior lobe from the inferior lobe for example this part okay this part of the oblique fissure superior part so this part is dividing the right lung into this is this is the superior lobe and this is the inferior lobe okay so 
superior portion of oblique fissure is dividing the superior lobe and inferior lobe or in other words we can say between the superior lobe and inferior lobe the superior part of the oblique fissure is present that way we can understand also then the inferior part of the oblique fissure so this part so what this part of oblique fissure is doing so it is dividing <coughs> the inferior lobe and middle lobe okay so here you see so this is the middle lobe and this is the inferior lobe so inferior part inferior portion of the oblique fissure is dividing the inferior lobe and middle lobe then <coughs> this is the horizontal fissure and you see this horizontal fissure is merging is combined is joining this horizontal fissure joins the oblique fissure so here you see the inferior part of the oblique fissure separate the inferior lobe from the middle lobe that is one thing and both this lobe this middle one and the inferior lobe they are bordered superiorly by the horizontal fissure okay so here you see this is the horizontal fissure and it is merging with the oblique fissure okay so this is the fourth point now moving on the fifth point now here I would like to show you the entire figure so you see this figure okay and one two three and four theory points and the figure now moving on the fifth point now this is the fifth point of our discussion Now, <clears throat> each lobe receives its own lobe bronchus. For example, uh, you read this point and I am directly explaining this point. Over here, this one is the trachea. And we know trachea bifurcate into main bronchi. And there are two main bronchi this one is the right this one is the right <coughs> main and this one is the left main bronchi now this one right main bronchi right main bronchi entering into the into the right lung and in the right lung there are two lobes in the right lung this one is the superior lobe this one superior lobe then this middle lobe and this two and one smaller one that is the third that is the inferior lobe okay so to uh, <coughs> to considerable size they are having these two lobe and one is very small in size that is the inferior lobe so we can say <coughs> in the right lung there are three lobes are present now and and what happens this is the right main bronchi and from this there arise three branches number one number two and number three these three branches they arise from the right main bronchi so the branch branch which enters into the superior lobe that branch is known as superior lobe bronchus 
and the other name other name for this bronchus is right secondary bronchus so second name also we are remembering right secondary bronchus then this one this one is the middle lobar bronchus or also known as the right middle secondary bronchus so that is the second name for this and this is the inferior lobe and one branch is entering into the inferior lobe so this branch is known as inferior lobe bronchus or also known as right inferior secondary bronchus so this is the this is the fifth this is the fifth theory point and <coughs> this is the figure okay now moving on the sixth point of our discussion now in the sixth point first of all here the trachea you see the trachea and trachea is bifurcating so this branch this one is the left main bronchi okay or this branch is also known as left primary bronchus or left main bronchus or bronchi now after once this left primary bronchus enters into left lung it it further bifurcates into two branch so this branch this branch where it is entering so left lung is having two lobe this one is the superior lobe and this lobe is the inferior lobe so the branch which is entering into superior lobe that branch is known as left superior secondary bronchus or also known as superior lobe bronchi so other name for this is superior lobe bronchus and the branch which is entering into inferior lobe that branch is known as left <coughs> inferior secondary bronchus or also known as left inferior lobe bronchi okay so this is the sixth point so here and you see this okay bronchial tree and with the color they have shown us primary bronchi secondary bronchi tertiary bronchi and still smaller bronchi moving on the seventh point of our discussion now once once this lobe bronchi enters into the lung what happens to them so this lobe bronchi they are further subdivided into segmental bronchi and this segmental bronchi are constant in both origin and distribution now what is the meaning of this that uh, there are from the lobe bronchi there arise 10 segmental bronchi and 10 segmental bronchi are present in each lung so in left or right lung there are 10 segmental bronchi and this are arise they originate from the lobe bronchi 
now point number 8 now the portion or the part of the lung tissue in which uh, this uh, segmental bronchus enters and supplies the atmospheric air that is the oxygen that segment or that part of the lung is known as the bronco pulmonary segment so we should pronounce this as bronco pulmonary segment okay so what is bronco pulmonary segment so the portion of lung tissue where the segmental bronchus is supplying the atmospheric air that is the oxygen now <coughs> the bronchial and pulmonary disorder such as the tumors and abscesses they occur they are localized if they are formed they are in the bronchopulmonary segment and this tumor and abscesses they can be removed surgically without uh, disturbing surrounding lung tissue so if the tumors or if the person or the patient is suffering from the tumors or abscesses so they are surgically removed from this bronco pulmonary segment without disrupting or disturbing the surrounding lung tissues now here uh, see uh, all the names so the other name left superior secondary bronchus or lower bronchus left inferior secondary bronchus or the lower bronchus here also right superior lower secondary bronchus right middle lower secondary bronchus right tertiary lobar bronchus okay now moving on the ninth point of our discussion now in each each now in each bronco pulmonary segment of lung is having many small compartment each bronco pulmonary segment is having many small compartment and this small compartment are known as the lobules so in the figure i am showing you the lobule so with the arrow they are showing us the lobule so so this is the lobule is shown and you see Okay. So, A at the bottom it is written A diagram of a portion of a lobule of the lung. Okay, so you are observing the lobule of the lung. So now, uh, which are the structures or the components of this lobule? So, in the lobule, first of all, uh, each lobule is wrapped around. by elastic connective tissue so lobule is covered by elastic connective tissue this is the el elastic connective tissue they are showing okay then in the lobule what is present lymphatic vessel arteriole venule and a branch from a terminal bronchiole so let's see all this structures so here you see uh, the terminal bronchiole is entering into the lobule then there is a pulmonary arteriole lymphatic vessel is there okay then here pulmonary capillary then pulmonary venule okay then the uh, alveolar sac alveolar duct alveoli visceral pleura all 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 these structures they are present in the lobule of the lung so this is the ninth point of our discussion and for this ninth point 
this is the this is the figure figure microscopy anatomy of a lobule of the lung now terminal bronchiole now we are discussing about this here the you see the terminal bronchiole and now what happens to this terminal bronchiole further into the lobules so in the lobule we know that uh, when the branching pattern in the lung reaches to the level of terminal bronchiole the conducting zone ends at the terminal bronchiole and now the respiratory zone <coughs> starts after the end of terminal bronchiole so now what happens to this terminal bronchiole so this terminal bronchiole and the lobule they are subdivided into microscopic branches so the branch which are now arising from the terminal bronchiole we cannot see them by our naked eyes and if we want to observe this smaller branch so we need to use the microscope and that's why they are the microscopic branches and this microscopic small branches are known as respiratory bronchioles so i will show you this respiratory bronchiole in the figure and one more thing that on the surface of this respiratory bronchiole um, there are alveolis are budding alveolis are also present on the wall of the respiratory bronchiole so here uh, let's see this thing in the figure so this is the terminal bronchiole is shown and from the terminal bronchiole what is happening you see over here the branch which is arising from the terminal bronchiole that is known as the respiratory bronchiole and and on the on the surface of respiratory bronchiole this are all this okay so on the surface on the wall of respiratory bronchiole the alveoli are also present so this is the this is the 10th point of our discussion and for this 10th point i am showing you this figure once again and over here uh, on right hand side they are showing one histological slide so this is the lung lobule okay histological slide you read all the names try to remember all the names now here this table now what happens to this respiratory bronchiole in the respiratory zone which are the new branches that are arising from the respiratory bronchiole so from the from the respiratory bronchiole uh, alveolar duct are arising this alveolar duct they are entering they are entering into the alveolar sac and alveolar sac is having alveolus so we are going to study all this thing so let's move on point number 11 so here now the alveoli in this we are discussing about the alveoli so here you see uh, this one you see the alveolar sac is shown and these are all the these are the alveoli okay so the cluster of alveoli is the alveolar sac now at the level of alveoli what is happening this alveoli this alveoli we consider them as the part of the respiratory zone 
and this alveoli they participate in the gas exchange that is the O2 and CO2 and thus respiratory bronchiole begin the respiratory zone that I told you earlier that from the respiratory bronchiole the respiratory zone of the respiratory system is starting okay so this is the point respiratory bronchiole from where the respiratory zone of the respiratory system is starting okay so this is the point number 11 and point number 12 now now you see over here first uh, all the names are important in this figure so first you observe this is the bronchiole okay then the branch which are arising from the bronchiole they are terminal bronchiole the branch which are arising from terminal bronchiole they are known as the respiratory bronchiole and from the respiratory bronchiole the branch which are arising they are known as the alveolar duct okay so i will show you in the figure the alveolar duct but over here you see uh, <coughs> alveoli and alveolar sac okay and here you see the you in this lecture you will get uh, some idea about the alveoli and the blood capillary are shown and if you read this all this thing so you will get the idea about the exchange of o2 and co2 uh, and i will explain this thing uh, in the separate lecture i will deliver a separate lecture on the alveoli and in that lecture i will explain all this thing okay but right now by your own you can observe this figure and all the name the name of the cell then the capillary cell and which are the cell which that are present in the alveoli wall so there is no harm done that you read all the names right now and try to preparing this thing okay in my next lecture <coughs> i will uh, explain entire alveoli and the gaseous exchange okay for that i have to deliver the separate lecture but you can prepare this now uh, this is the last point of today's lecture now what happens to this uh, respiratory bronchiole now this respiratory bronchiole uh, uh, penetrate more deeply into the lung so this respiratory bronchiole enters into the uh, deeper areas of the lung okay now what happens around the lumen the epithelial lining changes so earlier it was simple cuboidal epithelial cell in the epithelium now this cell they change and instead of this simple cuboidal now the epithelial layer is having squamous simple squamous epithelial cells are present okay and, and and what happens to this respiratory bronchiole so respiratory bronchiole is further subdivided into smaller branches 2 to 11 and this smaller branches are known as the alveolar duct okay and this alveolar duct they are entering into the alveoli okay and this alveolar duct the lumen of the uh, alveoli duct around the lumen uh, the simple uh, squamous epithelial cells are present so here uh, we are observing all this thing so here in uh, blue color branch of pulmonary artery is shown then this one is the uh, bronchiole is shown now what happens to bronchiole so the branch arise from the bronchiole that branch is known as the terminal bronchiole then from the terminal bronchiole now the branch arising is the respiratory bronchiole then now you see from the if you see this closely from the respiratory bronchiole now the branch that emerge is known as the alveolar duct and where this alveolar duct is going so this alveolar duct is opening this alveolar duct I will zoom this so you see this is the alveolar duct 
and this alveolar duct is opening into the alveoli and 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 many alveoli together the cluster of alveoli is known as the alveolar sac okay so 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 you go through all the name this is the this is the 12th number theory point and this is the last theory point of today's presentation lecture and and for this theory point you observe this figure okay go through all the names okay so with this uh, we have completed the presentation lecture on surface <coughs> anatomy of the lungs lobes fissures and lobules i hope you have enjoyed this presentation lecture and i also hope that this presentation lecture will be helpful in your exam preparation and also in your studies my name is manish koshti sir i am from amdavad india bye bye namaste